Over the course of the last century, our planet has become warmer, but in particular over the last 50 years. It is now recognized that human activities are largely responsible for this warming. In particular, the burning of fossil fuels has released huge quantities of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, which trap additional heat in the lower atmosphere. The impact of this is being seen worldwide as glaciers melt, sea levels rise, and there are more desert areas. The African continent is particularly exposed and vulnerable to the negative effects of global warming. Therefore, the African Union and the European Union have started to work together in the three key research areas affected by climate change, water, agriculture, and health. The result of this decision was a call for project proposals, the FP7 Africa Call, out of which several collaborative research projects were funded to help people coping with climate change. Sometimes, over the time, in the last maybe five to ten years, the climate has changed a great deal. There are times when it is very hot, you can see some rain coming, you wonder where it has gone, um, there are times when it doesn't even rain at all. And most of the people in such cases here, they rely on relief food from the government, from donors. Well, it is very difficult because we have just only one, one, one permanent river around at Kiboko, which is supplying water to this area. You, you, recently you could see people with the bicycles and jerrycans going to fetch water there. Makumagilia mashamba, utumaya na yaitu na magilia sasa mashamba mengi kuzidi, mpale mansoni. Na wanyama sasa hivi hauhangaike kwenda mtoni kuyo maji, wana maji haya nafika kwenye dimu, kwenye kibawa wa chao pale, na mwombe sinakunya vizuri. Tunapata maji ya kutosha kwenye kupiga matufari, kutesha bustani, Hospitali ni maji anapatikana sasa hatu choti maji kupeleka kwa kichwa mpaka hospitali alafu na mashuleni watoto wanatumia kwa hiyo inatusaidia sana kwa matumizi pia jumla ya nyumbani Wherever we are we are reliant on water we simply can't live without it as temperatures rise rainfall patterns become less predictable and the threat of both floods and droughts increases EU-funded research into drought forewarning systems, water resource management, and appropriate technologies is part of an ongoing work to help people adapt to a changing climate. Africa depends almost 90% on water-related activities. And any changes in the water supplies affects the people directly and the country as a whole. So we have impacts which cross all over the spectrum of communities uh, in terms of poverty and food security. We also have issues of, a clim of conflict, climate change driven conflicts, uh, which climate change affects the water supply and then the water supply, if it goes down, people start to fight over it. So we have very serious impacts uh, which run and also you have issues of uh, droughts, the frequency of which is becoming uh, much more uh, uh, frequent. Water is important uh, both for Africa and for Europe because water is life. Cooperation with Africa has been uh, the object of a specific call for proposals, that is, we call it the uh, Africa call. And we have actually uh, done that to ensure that uh, this climate change challenge is um, studied uh, with other continents. Uh, water management per se is a very complex issue and it involves, in fact, citizens of all ages, from international to local levels. And at a national scale, uh, the principles of integrated water resource management have been adopted by the United Nations and are actually followed up worldwide. And all these management principles require a lot of uh, scientific knowledge. Climate change represents uh, an additional pressure on 
uh, water demand, water, uh, water resources, ecosystem and so on. And we need to take care about this pressure which is exacerbating, exacerbating uh, existing pressures. So the, the fourth uh, assessment report of the intergovernmental um, panel for climate change has, has lighted that climate change is likely to um, affect uh, water resources. And in particular, for example, they have uh, stressed that uh, dry area may become drier, wet area may become wetter. It means that all action programs taken to uh, manage the water will have to include also adaptation measures. So the seventh framework program for research has given a high priority on studies on climate change impact on the water uh, cycle. There is a very wide range of projects that have been funded uh, during the years 2002-2007 and after thereafter in uh, 2013. And it helped in fact to uh, frame um, possible options uh, related to water policies that might be uh, open to, to, uh, to adaptation measures. The first step to evaluating climate change patterns is in fact monitoring and predicting future patterns. Better forecasting enables scientists to develop better equipment and coping strategies. The DUFORA project is focused on developing drought forecasting systems to minimize the impact on local communities. We are basically looking at uh, the vulnerability of the Greater Horn of Africa to, to droughts. Uh, we are doing this mainly through analysis of data, which is collected from uh, meteorological stations and socio-economic data put together in one place and then uh, looking at the vulnerabilities of the communities within the Greater Horn of Africa. The GEOFORA project is, is focusing on, uh, on, on improving drought forecasting and warning. And the idea of, of forecasting warning is actually, is actually quite simple. Is, is if we can um, provide information of, of let's say, the, the, the expectation of the weather, you know, if it's too dry or too, too wet also in the, in the coming three to six months, then uh, users on the ground, for example farmers, can maybe take measures to to reduce the impact of, of extreme weather, for example, of, a, of extreme drought. Building resilience against drought requires, as one of the strategies, an early warning system. So within the project, we're looking at, on the one hand, the vulnerability of different groups, so how do we prioritize different uh, user groups, and also how do we work with institutions to translate the message from the forecast to the, to the warning. The entire world is experiencing an increased demand on water resources and reduced water availability. This is mainly due to changes in land usage, particularly in Africa, where there is more human activity due to population growth, economic development and increased agriculture. My Water is a very special project where they are developing strategies to cope with the water issues in Africa. What we are trying to do is to put all of these uh, data sources working together into a unique interface software platform which is highly accessible and flexible um, to uh, output almost automatic service chains to uh, providing user tailored results um, to uh, users in different water related uh, activities, namely um, water for irrigation, namely water for consumption, for energy production, even for flood preparedness. So with all of this together, providing uh, information about all of the water related variables, we will be able not only to have more accurate and uncertain results, as uh, we will also be able to uh, provide uh, forecasts and simulation capabilities which are uh, so necessary. Through greater access to information, it is hoped that access to water itself can be improved. Research is also being carried out in other areas of water resource management. Afromaison is a multi-partner project which brings together different expertise to help find sustainable solutions. So the key aspect of uh, Afromaison is really in uh, developing strategies uh, to deal, for example, with climate change in the context of natural resource management, uh, which means that in a stakeholder-driven process we try to uh, 
to look at the risks and then in the next step at the developing strategies to deal with those risks or to deal with consequences uh, of climate change and other societal changes in the areas where we work with. Ethiopia is actually one of the largest population in Africa and then it's also an agriculture based economy and in agriculture based economy both land and water are really very much important. Although Ethiopia has a large land resource and large water resource, we haven't used really efficiently and effectively those resources. There is really a need actually to work on water and water related resources to improve efficiency, to pr improve this productivity and then to address actual issue of poverty and economic development. So UMI is contributing towards that goal. There's a lot of indigenous knowledge, traditional knowledge that uh, is often as important as the scientific knowledge. Climate change has an impact on water resources as much in Europe as it does in Africa. Some of the partnership research projects work in both continents. CLIMB works in the Mediterranean region. CLIMB is taking the approach of looking at small scale watersheds in the Mediterranean region. So we're not covering nationwide assessments, but we're focusing on dedicated watersheds, dedicated case studies in which we can experience um, climate change impact. And um, the, f the first necessity in order to get started and to initiate such a project is to find and identify um, a good partner, um, which we gladly did in our cases in the, the Tunisian site and in the Egyptian site, in the Nile Delta in particular, where we are um, setting up and building with their help um, a local network of stakeholders, a local network of scientists, and we try to collaborate together first to collect information that is crucial for the project, but um, second also to um, have communication partners to explain um, our findings and to make sure that these findings propagate and disseminate into the Egyptian and Tunisian public. I work with CLIM group as a principal investigator for global climatic change and its effect on the Nile Delta of Egypt. Global climatic change is a fact. Rising of the sea level is a fact. Sea water intrusion is a fact. We measured it. And we just start to have many problems for that in Nile Delta. Climb is helping me how to manage groundwater abstractions from the ground, not to encourage the sea water intrusions to come to us. By using the appropriate technology, people have the right tools to adapt to climate change. WashTech tools help the stakeholders to validate water and sanitation technologies to fit in the specific context of application and identify obstacles towards sustainable water services. A WashTech is an action research project, as we call it. So it's very much based on the ground and we are working with partners that are directly involved in the real situation. And that means local government, uh, NGOs, manufacturers, so the private sector, but also hand pump mechanics, and with users. So we involve them to get the real picture how uh, issues around technology and particularly the sustainability of service, but technology plays a very important role in sustainability of water and sanitation service. All technologies do not work everywhere. It has to, you have to study the context under which you want to introduce it and make sure that the conditions on the ground are right to make the technology work optimally. A technology applicability framework that I have is a framework that's supposed to help everyone who is involved in the provision of wash services to assess how applicable that technology being introduced is to the context in which it's being introduced. The challenges that are ahead for drought forecasting and monitoring is uh, basically data. We don't have enough data. The methods of forecasting droughts have not been properly done, so there's also a, 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 um, a challenge there. And then lastly, the socioeconomic aspects of drought. We have poverty issues within the African communities that would really interfere with coping with droughts, whether we forecast it or not.
what we see in, a, in, 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 in Africa is, is a large variety of, of, of climates and, um, and also there's actually quite a lot of water resources uh, in Africa, um, even though often you see pictures of a dry continent, but there is, uh, in fact, sufficient water, but it's the distribution of water that is the problem, not only geographical distribution, but also in time. So sometimes we have too much water and sometimes we have too little water. So um, providing information such through forecasting is is trying to help us cope with um, the variability of the climate. Climate change is a fact. We cannot go around that. And we see that in terms of, of water, there are many effects. And the effects are related to the water accessibility, availability, uh, the water quantity and the water quality. Water is life. It is a precondition for human, animal and plant life as well as an indispensable resource for the economy. Water also plays a fundamental role in the climate regulation cycle. Water scarcity and drought is an increasingly frequent and widespread phenomenon in Europe and in Africa. Successful adaptation to the impacts of climate change on water is key to ensure a future for all.